You've guessed it, you've heard it, you've seen it. God damn, Miss Weaver is turning heads in 8.3. There are a couple of ways to build it, and we will explore some of the best and coolest playstyles for Miss Weaver with the right talent, gear, corruptions, rotations, and more. So stay tuned. You probably noticed there is no funny skit today. And you know what that means, right? Fart boobs. I'm an adult. Check us on stream dudes and dudettes. We play a bunch of classes and specs and Miss Weaver goodness. We are live on twitch.tv slash online five days a week and the schedule tries to catch multiple time segments so we can get everybody in eventually. There are essentially three builds for Miss Weaver at the moment and the hot topic is clearly Rising Mist. Rising Mist has been nerfed meaning what you knew about it or what other people say about it could be wrong. Emphasis on could. We still aim at keeping things beginner friendly and easy to pick up, but we'll clarify some of the misconceptions as best we can. Now, onwards, Sebastian, my trusty steed, to the talent! First row, Miswrap is going to be an option for you in Mythic Plus mostly, and even there might be the biggest gain you have. That one second extra of enveloping mist adds over time and can save people's lives, man. They told me that's important. Uh, in raids, it's not that great, especially if you plan on playing Rising Mist, since after the nerf, Rising Mist should not be used to extend enveloping mists anymore, but renewing mists instead. As such, in raids, take Chi Burst. Hitting at least four targets with it will net overall more value than anything else here, and in raids, that should be as easy as playing Havoc. What? It applies Mystic Touch too. Not saying that's what you use it for, but it's good to know that before forcing yourself to apply Mystic Touch another way. The second row will be fairly situational and based on personal preference. The only real worthwhile mention is Tiger's Lust. On top of the burst of speed, this removes roots and slows and snares. This is clearly useful in Mythic Plus keys, but also really helpful in raids. Specifically, Mythic Rathian with the stacking movement mechanic or the Shadar Living Miasma debuff. Miasma? Miasma? Your asthma? I don't know. Outside of this, your creativity is the limit. Next up is Manatee for overall purposes. It provides the most reliable mana management option on the road. Works especially well if you play in dungeons with the PvP talent Way of the Crane, since that bitch chunks 25% of your mana. If you are doing keys without that, however, life cycles can be a good dungeon choice if you simply spam a gazillion enveloping mists. That's the only time you can actually outperform manatee in terms of mana management. Gazillion enveloping mists, which in dungeons isn't as big of an issue. Don't take this in raids, please. Playing the life cycle rotation is going to be suboptimal in terms of healing performance. Row number four, Ring of Peace. End of story. But wait, Flape, isn't there more to no? No more. Ring is bis. You can get higher corruption levels and zone the things with this baby. Not to mention there is at least one or two uses for it in raids and infinite uses for it in dungeons. The fifth row brings some defensive cooldowns options to consider. Diffuse magic will probably be your most used one. For one thing, it's incredibly strong against magic damage. 60% what? Are you kidding me? Damage reduction that is. Second, you reflect your magical debuffs back at the attacker, as long as the attacker isn't the fear mob in the dungeon obelisk, in which case you will fear your tank and your melees. Don't do it, man! Third, you rarely, and I mean rarely, should ever take physical damage to need dampen harm. Can happen in a few keys, like King's Rest and stuff, but outside very specific situations, the fuse should be your main go-to. Next up, Jade Serpent Statue will be a good universal pick. It helps with single target healing, costs minimal mana since you only need to cast Soothing Mist for one tick and the statue continues to do its thing for 30 seconds. It also helps when playing in raids with people spread out too much for refreshing Jade Wind, which is your stacked group option, for raiding mostly. There are a few boss fights this can work on. A quick note though. Chiji isn't as good anymore. It was previously used for Rising Mist because it saved you GCDs so you can fist away and still heal targets that were spread out. Not anymore. Don't take. It's fine. 
here we go let's get this out of the way first rising mist is still very viable to take in both raining and dungeons but the build changed a bit or a lot based on your level of comparison it doesn't require as much haste as before and the giga haste build that people have been giddy about is officially dead the talent isn't though and we will go over more of this later in the video upwelling is the alternative for raiding it's simple to use boost your essence font to crazy levels and is not that gear reliance or encounter reliance because for both raiding and dungeons rising mists assumes you can stay and melee the enemies for pretty much the entire fight when you cannot do that you have other options focused thunder is the mythic plus option adds a second charge to your thunder focus t boosting your spell of choice with more freedom over what effect you want to stack or alternate. If you plan on playing Rising Mist in raiding scenarios, the ideal stats to go for is haste until about 25% to a max of 30%. Not really anything more since this amount is enough to ensure the build plays properly. After that, crit followed by versatility will be your ideal focus point, with mastery being the worst stat here. If you want to rising mist fist weave in dungeons, eye level will be king and you'll be fine as long as you don't dip too hard into one specific stat. After eye level you can go for any secondary stat you want with crit and versatility never disappointing. Also a note here, if you don't plan on getting Way of the Crane from Conflict Major, then Mastery will probably shoot way higher here. As for the standard non-Rising Mist builds, Crit and Versatility at the very top can even be tied in value once you get higher eye levels with Mastery and Haste following closely behind. Yes, Haste is at the bottom if you don't play Rising Mist. These are mostly references here, the stat weights have been tested by the community which you can check for more details and to keep things simple and consistent, we will recommend crit focused consumables, since even with rising mist you don't want to stack too much haste. So get a cord of critical strike and deadly lava lazuli for your everyday crit needs. If your gear is on the low eye level side, you can even get a leviathan's eye of intellect in one of the sockets. Intellect will steadily lose value over time as your gear improves though. For your weapon, Mechanist Brilliance will be your universal choice here since it always also gives Intellect, which is never a bad stat, especially if you want to fist weave since Intellect is translated into damage and not agility, if ever you were wondering. With that in mind, always use the Greater Flask of Endless Fathoms. As for potions, at the start of the fight you can pre-pot the DPS potion since healing isn't really needed. We recommend the superior potion of intellect here with having some potions of replenishment saved just in case you need some mana or you know, in case shit. Eat feasts whenever available or the McDowell's Big Mac for that crit buff. Note that for the rising mist build you can replace any of these with haste to get to that 25% haste and then just use crits. A quick shout out to questionably epic life, currently the only real sim you can do for healers. If you want to check what traits, trinkets, essences, corruptions, whatever gives you the most HPS, go there with your character details. We will still recommend some of the best with the hopes that if you want to min-max, you understand that questionably epic life is the main place to do that. First and foremost, Heart of Darkness stacked as many times as you can will be your main focus. The raw amount of stats it gives offers more HPS than any other option in the game, not to mention it's dirt easy to get in the raid since all of the Azurai pieces have it. You can either replace or fill in the rest of the slots with Secret Infusion. Again, stats will never betray you, not to mention that stats affect your entire kit as opposed to a specific spell. One Uplifted Spirits is always good to have for that cooldown reduction, which doesn't stack with multiple traits. One Font of Life is also good for raiding with Upwelling. In keys, if you plan to kick some fools, Sunrise Technique with Way of the Crane translates into healing, especially if you can apply it to multiple targets. Which you can with Thunder Focus T, by the way. There are other options out there and after the Rising Mist nerf, the haste variants of the traits died, so you should probably stay away from them. Mistweavers has a few majors it can play with. In raids, Memory of Lucid Dreams paired with the high-octane healing phase will net you some of the most 
mana gains out there. Mistweaver drains mana pretty heavily, which is why you have so many mana management things in your kit. Once you are actually comfortable and don't need the mana boost, Conflict and Strife can be a good alternative, especially for Rising Mist. Conflict and Strife gives you the Way of the Crane PvP talent that, although costs a buttload of mana, it translates your damage into a lot of healing. Now, the tooltip for it is not very informative. It only translates the physical damage you do yourself or from your Azerite. Does not work on Trinkets or Corruptions and... For spinning crane kick in AoE, it's actually diminished by 50%, but more than the rotation. Miners can be Ever Rising Tide, Conflict and Strife, and Formless Void for any raid build you want, with Well of Existence and Vitality Conduit being good options for upwelling builds. Formless Void has a lot of uptime in raids because of everyone's essences being popped all over the place. The two best majors, ideally for Mythic Dungeons, are the same as the ones for the raid. There are also a few that are easier to get into and can help you learn the ways of the healing. One such option is Lifebinder's Invocation. It helps you be a bit proactive, which is a skill all healers should have and develop, but will likely be outclassed by the other two options we mentioned earlier. Other majors are a little bit underwhelming for Mistweaver since your single target and AoE throughput are pretty crazy. Whirlvane Resonance can function well though to fuel that and with a lower cooldown you can use it fairly often, but feel free to play around with other options and see what you like. A note about Vitality Conduit, it's a good alternative for Necrotic Weeks since the stacks do not affect the healing of this one since it translates HP and doesn't actually heal. Miners can be similar to the Raid with Ever Rising Tide taking one of the spots, Spirit of Preservation works well into buffing Vivify, while Well of Existence functions pretty much well with the Monk Kit in the lack of a better option. One of the best trinkets in the game for healers by far is the Obsidian Claw from Mauds. It adds to your damage and returns mana back and with Rising Mist aka more haste, it scales even better. And speaking of Rising Mist, Humming Black Dragon Scale can be a good addition to the build since it has a really high uptime on the haste buff. And usually you don't want any more than what this guy can offer you anyway. Looking at you, Vita. No, bad Vita. No longer viable. Go away. Other options are Alchemist Stone, which is always good and relatively easy to get since you just craft it. Conk of Dark Whispers can be a strong crit choice for non-rising miss builds or if you simply have too much haste. The raid drops two corrupted weapons that you can use. Vorziokal is coming with Void Ritual, which is a budget corruption. In and of itself, it's pretty good because stats, once again, but likely will be cleansed, especially if you loot Markoa, which is by far your best in slot corruption. Flash of Insight is crazy good, and I am mega jealous because my Resto Druid cannot loot this. Play it! Chigulaios is the sword from Carapace, drops at a higher eye level than the rest and that makes it very attractive. But if the stars is an expensive corruption, it can proc from healing gun but has multi-target weaknesses and the price for it can only be justified if you need extra boss damage on high tyrannical weeks or solo boss fights like Shadar which are rare anyway. Corruptions have two goals you are interested in, damage output and healing. DPS matters in higher-end content or when you are comfortable with the spec and can afford to sacrifice potential throughput for killing the boss faster, which still means less healing you have to do. Ineffable Truth is good for Rising Mist only, but has fallen off a bit as of late. Probably the best core options to focus on are Void Rituals with stat increases like Severe and Versatile, addressing Crit and Versatility which are already your best stats, if not for Haste, and Rising Mist. And even with Rising Mist, the haste corruptions would put you way above where you want to be haste-wise, so getting those is not a big win after the nerf. When healing in raid and anytime as a healer, you want to cast heals for a reason and not just because they are available, clearly. The most important thing to do is keep renewing mist on cooldown on as many targets as you can. Cast Essence Font when 6 or more targets are hurt and need the healing. 
Soothing Mist should only be used if you want to spam multiple vivifies on the same person or to activate Jade Statue, which should run 100% of the time and you only need to tap your Soothing Mist once for 1GCD to enable this. Vivify is used for any damage that doesn't need Essence Font to heal and cast it with Thunder Focus T ideally. Cast Developing Mist only when you plan to continue healing the same target to take advantage of the extra percentage in healing done. If you are running Rushing Jade Wind instead of Statue, use it when there are 5 allies near you that are damaged. And whenever you don't need to Vivify, use Chi Burst. As a priority, you want to use Thunder Focus with Vivify primarily for both the mana management and the mastery buff from the Secret Infusion trait. After that, use it with Sun Kick for the damage and versatility is second best. If neither of these two is needed or possible, use Thunder Focus T with Renewing Mist, but the haste buff you get from Secret Infusion is incredibly meh here. This priority system has the purpose of installing the proper mindset you need to have when you want to be efficient with your healing and mana. Results wise, the correct playstyle would net you more than any Azerite, Essence or Corruption can ever give you. The playstyle is largely the same with Rising Mist, you will need to add a few things. Clearly you want Rising Sun Kick as often as possible and never cast Essence Font after Rising Sun Kicks. Not to mention that Essence Font will start to lose value once you have 5 Renewing Mists at which point Vivify will become way better to cast. You aim at getting as many Sun Kick resets with Blackout Kick as possible, of which reset chance isn't increased if you stack Teachings of the Monastery. Outside of this, keep to the raid healing rotation and priority by adjusting in the melee uptime and slowly but surely weaving out Essence Fonts from your rotation. Note that Rising Mist is a very conditioned playstyle, the biggest of which is you being able to consistently hit the boss or mobs, be it raids or dungeons, without hindering your group with any mechanics. When playing Way of the Crane, Rising Mist or Focus Thunder selected regardless, you have a specific DPS rotation. Outside of using Thunder Focus T on Rising Sun Kicks, your DPS rotation will depend on the number of targets you are fighting. Against one or two targets, you want to use Rising Sun Kick into Tiger Palm three times for the teachings of the Monastery stack, and then into Blackout Kick. Against 3 targets, use Sun Kick into Spinning Crane Kick and with 4 or more targets, just use Spinning Crane Kick. Because Spinning Crane Kick has a 50% reduction in the healing transfer it does with Way of the Crane, as mentioned before. Way of the Crane is very expensive and you always want to pair it with Manatee and a good opener to do is to pop Thunder Focus T, pop Manatee, then Way of the Crane, then Sun Kick, and depending on whether you have Rising Mist Talented or Focus Thunder, you can end up with a lot more Sun Kicks that translate into a lot of healing. This is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to take your playstyle to the next level, make sure to visit the Peak of Serenity community on Discord and the questionably epic website where the top healers gather and hey, if you are also logging and want to know more about what you can do to get good, Use WoW Analyzer, currently ran by Anomaly and Abelito, two of the top knowledgeable misweavers in the community. Abelito, together with Fatal Bones, also helped us with the guide when it came to advanced stuff and feedback and all that good jazz. So, thank you very much, guys. You can find these fine gentlemen in the Peak of Serenity community, which also has a website, by the way. And also, we want to give a special shout out to our patrons for continuously supporting our content. You make this possible, you make us strive for better and higher quality videos, so thank you very much guys, we appreciate it, love you, and if you're interested to see what this is all about, and if you want to support us a little bit more, check the link down below, you'll find our Patreon link, you can find the Teespring link, which has some merch, kind of like uh, this one, maybe you like it, thank you for watching the video, catch you in the next one.